Hi there, I'm David Garrido. We have such an amazing sporting summer ahead, of course. We head to Rio in Brazil for the greatest sporting spectacle on earth. But look, there might be some sports on your TV screens that you're not entirely familiar with. Brought to you by Freedom Polarised Sunglasses. I'm here at the Score Centre in East London to learn as much as I can about two popular, if perhaps lesser known sports. Let's get cracking. James, you must be Luke. Right, yeah. I'm David, nice to meet you. So, modern pentathlon, we're talking show jumping, we're talking swimming. Yeah. I'm ready, let's go. What we got first? Well, we're gonna do some fencing today, but first, David, of course, we need to warm up. So come on, yeah. keep up. Okay. Now? Now. Now. So, okay. So the running bit of modern pentathlon already I know I'm probably <laughs> going to struggle with. The modern pentathlon. James, how did it come about? Because it's been a, around for a while, hasn't it? So it starts with the creation of the modern Olympics in 1912 with Pierre, the founder, wanted to get the essence of an, of an ultimate soldier stuck behind enemy lines who could escape using pistol, sword, land and sea, also using a horse if necessary. So that's what we still do today. Okay, that's cool. I like that story. What about the training though? Uh, Luke, you've got five different events. How do you possibly prepare? What's your average day look like? Yeah, training day is pretty hectic. It's about four to six hours every day, like changing in sports. And it varies around when you're coming up to certain competitions, when you're tapering down. And what about the kit you carry with you? Because you've always got what looks like a, a massive golf bag with you. So what's in there? What are you carrying with you? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots. So you need all your, your riding kit, your swimming kit, a pair of sunnies for the shooting so you don't get any glare. And then, of course, you need your fencing kit. Here is a fun fencing fact for you. In 1968, a Soviet athlete, a Boris Onyshenko, clever guy actually, what he did was he installed a button hidden away inside the guard of his epee uh, so that he could press it at the pivotal moment so that it looked like his light had come up and he had scored a point and he was caught by a Brit, he was disqualified, and he was banned as well, and he was forever thereafter known as Boris Dishonishenko. That's something you're about to experience firsthand. This was not part of the plan. I never said that this was part of the plan. Ah. 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 Oh, I honestly thought I had you for once. James, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy that. Right, so, from one of the most historic, one of the oldest sports, to one of the newest, beach volleyball. But first, I've got to get rid of these. Sorry to interrupt. Hi there, I'm David. Andy. Nice to meet you, Andy. Hello. Issa. Nice to meet you, Issa. I'm David. Um, I really want to get going. I want to get stuck in and I'm all warmed up and everything. But before we actually start, what makes a great beach volleyball player, Andy? Well, it's essential to have good speed, stamina and strength. Yeah, I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. So, some terminology here. A pokey, is that right? Uh, that yes, right? a pokey. It's a form of the attack over the net. It's um, usually used when you want to go deep or short around the block. To right, the and you literally poke the ball like that. Yeah. Oh, you see that? You see that? Um, I mean, it seems like, as far as you're concerned, all you need is a good beach court and it not to be raining. And, and you can play beach volleyball, is that right? Yes, however, when it's sunny outside, you need a good pair of polarised glasses uh, to reduce the glare and keep your eye on the ball. Yeah, perfect. Right, let's go. Let's get cracking, awesome. boys. So there you have it. I've had an awesome time playing with these guys. I hope you've learned something. And all I can say is if you're watching in Brazil, good luck. Yeah. 